All right, everybody, Smoky Investment Team practice report. Uh, a Wednesday, I swear it feels like Thursday, but it's Wednesday, the last day of, of access that we have this week until Saturday, right? Yes. Till Saturday. Joe Sloan spoke today. He was really good, went for 22 minutes. That video is already up on our YouTube channel. Mike Scarborough here with Buddy Sanji. And, uh, any takeaways today, buddy? Happy hump day, everybody. A lot of, little breeze today, not quite as hot. Of course, everybody knows that these brutal temperatures, uh, look, we did talk to Joe Sloan and we have a lot of tidbits for you. So hope all of you are doing well, getting your fix uh, with LSU football. And uh, right out of the gate, uh, Mike, they let us stay all the way to the end of practice. Uh, it was uh, hot at the last uh, 20, 30 minutes, but the guys are looking good. Starting to see some progress. Savion Jones, number 35. You touted him as better than Mason Smith as a recruit. This is his money year. He's doing a good job getting pressure. He's not been known as a pass rusher. He had a good day. The D tackles are coming around. Deshaun Spears is one of the best safeties. You're going to see number 10 play a lot of football as a freshman. But, Mike, once again, these receivers are helping make these DBs better because they're really good. I just w went through the list. Nine LSU receivers. That's how deep they are. Colin Billiot and Jelani Watkins are two freshmen, 82 and 17 at the back end. But even though Xavier Thomas has not been out here, Shelton Sampson, Aaron Anderson, Kyle Parker, and then two, three, four, Kyron Lacey, uh, Chris Hilton, and, uh, of course, uh, C.J. Daniels. By the way, major props like we've been giving Chris Hilton, major props for Chris Hilton once again uh, from Joe Sloan today. Absolutely. Uh, I got him off a pointed question on Caleb Jackson. He had a very long and detailed answer, and I think it was all pretty much common sense as to why you know, all of us know what a talent he is, and, and certainly when you see the before and after photos of him physically from the spring until now, he's put in the work. But, uh, you know, he was right. Uh, why didn't he get uh, the bulk of the carries when he's such a bruising, uh, take it to the house type of back? Well, because he wasn't a midterm grad last year. He came in the summer. We all know he didn't play just about any of his senior season, hurt in the first half of his first game. And so, um, you know, but hopefully he, he knows all the passing assignments and, and where to be in the running lanes. And a uh, really good answer from Joe Sloan when you check out that video. I also want to flip it around to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, we always talk about the interior defensive line. I still have concerns about the edge rush. When I see one-on-ones, I'm not, I'm not seeing where the damage is going to come from yet. I mean, I mean, is Deshaun Womack flash for you? Well, look, it's, it's early in camp. I'm Braden, not seeing Braden it. Swenson has not been out there, and he's probably the best rusher from the edge. Deshaun Womack, Savion Jones, Collage Cobbins, number 48. They moved him to defensive end. He was a jack linebacker. Really good player. He's coming on. Uh, look, I mean, look, I'm, I'm not singling Womack out. Yeah. But I'm not seeing – there's – you know, it just it dawned on me. We've been out here at every practice. Has there been a flash of any edge rusher yet where you went, wow? Well, you, know, you, I mean, you they have one of the best offensive lines in the country that's blocking true. them. By the way, Tyree Adams and uh, Weston Davis continue to do good. 71 impresses me on those one-on-ones. But, uh, look, a lot of depth, a lot of guys in the mix. You're going to get a lot of uh, – There's a little uh, – I just gave you a little bit of negative for those of you who said that me, me and Buddy might be pumping a lot of sunshine. Um, but I don't know that's well, wait, even, I, what but the I, hell? But I've I, seen a lot of sunshine oh, yeah, yeah. right now. But everybody's undefeated. But there's plenty of work to do. But I think in due time, we'll ask Blake Baker about that from the edge. We get Coach Baker on Saturday. But uh, you have concerns. I think you do agree, though. The uh, worry about the D tackle. We don't know how good they are, but they've got enough bodies. 95, 96, 31, all those guys are going to back up Geo and Jacoby and Gilry. And then, uh, uh, look, they're going to play seven or eight. And I think the fact that Bo Davis has got his hands on these kids and is shaping them and giving the, them the, the, the lowdown, he's the best defensive line coach in the country. Glad LSU's got him. Texas is going to hurt because of his departure. Absolutely. Of course, this practice report brought to you by Bart and Brian Smokey at the Smokey Investment Team. What is something you could do with your money that would be meaningful to you? Do you feel like you need some guidance to realize those goals? At the Smokey Investment Team, they have over 50 years of experience doing just that. If you want to get serious about reaching your financial potential, give them a call at 318-448-3201. 318-448-3201. And as always, please tell them you heard about them on Tiger Bait. And, of course, security and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, 
a registered investment advisor, member FINRA slash SIPC. Great, great people. Again, known them forever. And uh, big LSU fans, alumni, and right there in Alexandria. So if you're anywhere in central Louisiana, uh, and if you're one of the youngsters, get your financial stuff going early. You don't have to put a whole lot away each month. These are the guys who you want to be with, the Smoky Investment Team. Good to get the green back in the, the mix yesterday, and it's green today, so Carl Park and his son. All right, I asked Joe Sloan a three-part question, in case you don't know about it. Let's get to a communication in the helmet. Brian Kelly in the spring joked about it. Joe could get long-winded. You have communication, and you will have dialogue between Garrett Nussmeyer and Joe Sloan. Fifteen seconds left on the plate call clock. It cuts off. I asked Joe what happens, and of course they've got a contingency. I think they're going to look to the sidelines and use the cards. If they have a problem with that, you might have to call a timeout. Also, iPads and tablets are on the sideline this year. Uh, the reason I asked him about that is instead of going up there, you can see actually what's going on right now. You can see what they're doing, stunting here or there. And then, of course, the third thing that uh, is going to be from a strategic standpoint, don't forget, two-minute clock before the end of the half and at the end of the game. That is, we know, Brian Kelly and that offensive brain trust, you got to win the last two minutes right before half and certainly got to finish out the game, as Joe said, whether it's kicking a field goal, scoring a touchdown, or running the clock. So, uh, But I'm very impressed with Joe Sloan. And, you know, I never doubted uh, him getting the job, but he seemed like, once again, a very happy young man because a lot of camaraderie. This is not about me. This is about we. And I think that's why we've been positive. We're getting a vibe of that these guys are all on the same page. And uh, team, the acronym, together everyone accomplishes more. I'm seeing that right now. Uh, we do have a little negative part to, to give you. Uh, so Are you going can, to punting? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Look, Peyton Todd has not been consistent and, and is just not uh, getting the ball to turn her over. But today we saw Oxendorf get a little bit of a tired leg. And uh, as you know, that's a question that we never get answered. How much can you get a guy out there and punt him before his leg gets tired? But a little inconsistency with 99 today punting the football. Yeah, um, but I will say this. Even though his inconsistency, though, is more of a line drive, and it still might go 40 or 50 yards. Uh, th th that's the difference. Uh, Peyton Todd's inconsistency is it'll go 18 yards and out of bounds. And so, look, uh, all we need now is the Hells Angels to drive by on this practice report. But uh, that's okay. Um, anything else you want to add, uh, hit, the, hit that like button if you're enjoying these practice reports. Uh, thank you all for doing that. And, again, subscribe, notification bell. We hit 31,000 subscribers on Monday, and uh, it ain't going to be long. I bet you it's going to be more, no more than a month, less than a month. We'll be at 32,000. Thanks to all you guys subscribing to LSU Tigers on Tiger Bait. Yeah, the man, the spicy tidbit of the day is that, look, these guys are going to give up some passes. But I do think you've got more physicality in the secondary. Deshaun Spears, number 10. Jawan Johnson, number 24. Colin Jackson, number 23. Joel Rogers, number 22. All of those are new guys. And we're not even talking about Jordan Gilbert, number two, and all the other guys that are coming in. So... Uh, take a patience pill. You're going to give up some yardage to USC and give up some touchdowns. But I think this defensive staff has them slowly rounded into shape. Of course, today was the first day of pads, but they're very smart. They go thud, which means you tackle, but you don't go to the ground. That's where a lot of these injuries with knees take place. Davion so, on the bike today. I yeah. saw him pedaling over there. And again, uh, not saying that uh, Aaron Anderson is going to be the guy, but they, it, they, they haven't totally uh, uh, given up on him being a, a possibility in the return game. Yeah. And so far, every rep that I've seen, he's caught every one of them. But it's different at practice, obviously. Um, but uh, they haven't given on, up on him in the return game whatsoever. So um, we're going to see how that uh, plays out. In the hey, end. one so, other tidbit just to add. Joe was asked about the departure of Mac Markway. And look, folks, if you like balls thrown to the tight end, you're going to have a party on Saturday and Sunday nights this year. Uh, we know that uh, Mason Taylor can do both, and we know that they're going to give him more targets. 
Once again, look at the footage of 14 Tredes Green, Camaro and Pipton, number 88. And oh, by the way, Giovanni Peterson, 45, is going to probably be your tight end that comes in on two tight end situations. If you need three, probably going to use a big ugly to, to put there in the backfield as a blocker. But uh, all is good and, and well on a hump day. A little cooler, a little breeze. And uh, folks, get ready because three weeks from Sunday night, LSU kicks it off 6.30 on ABC in Vegas. Hit the like button on it. Tiger Bait live tonight, 8 o'clock. Buddy and I in studio. And, of course, uh, listen to him on Pelican Sports. Tell him how to get the app. He's on from 1 to 3. As soon as we break down here, he's going live in the vehicle, and I'll be joining his show at 1.30. So tell him how to get that app, buddy. Yeah, just uh, download Pelican Broadcasting, and then when you get to it, Pelican Sports Radio, 1 to 3, every Monday through Friday. Mike has a link on the Tiger Bait site to go right to it. Absolutely. That's in the uh, uh, Apple Store and on Google, Android, and uh, it's a great way to listen to Buddy. He's got great guests every day and um, got Matt, a lot of football talk. But Matt Mark joining me in the second hour today. I can, I can take you about 140 if you need a little downtime. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll be fine. But uh, all right, guys. Thanks y'all again, and um, we'll see y'all tonight on Tiger Bait Live at 8, 8 o'clock, and I guess we'll be back out here Sunday with another practice report for the Smokey Investment Team. Y'all have a good day. We'll see you tonight.